Good morning, everybody. It's Vapixy from Subjugated Gaming, bringing you some more Horus Heresy Legions content. Now, this is not King of the Hill. This is me showcasing my round three matches from the World Cup. Because uh, I just had those. And have, some of them are very long games. Uh, at least one of them is a 20-minute game uh, that uh, I played against Adriana in the World Cup. And I'm going to show you them today. They're very, very good matches. There's such suspense and tension as I was playing them, and I just wanted to show you guys. So we're going to jump into them, but I'm not going to show you if I win or lost at the beginning. We're just going to go into them, play them out, and see how we go. Now, before I begin, I do want to tell you guys that I'm on Kurz and Ulrak, Ulrach, whatever, um, for my two warlords, and she was on Kurz and Angron, right? So I really didn't want to play the Kurz mirror, so I thought I would play... Uh, uh, Ulrach first, expecting her to play Kurz. And I made these four decks here. Uh, versus Angron for the Mirror, versus Angron and versus Kurz. And I kind of assumed she'd play Kurz first, so I decided to play my versus Kurz deck. And I'll show you that. So this is the deck that I played uh, in that matchup, right? And it's just got all your anti sort of Kurz stuff. So you joke companies to get rid of the Recon Claws. Yara for all the um, uh, healing and gaining and attack. What's we call it? And all that sort of stuff, you know, you've got your uh, anti-stealth cards, you've got your good stuff for him, so all your stealth, your flanking cards. So just like a decent list, as good as it's going to get to verse Curse. So that's what we did in the first match, assuming we're versing Curse. So we're going to jump into that. Okay, so here's the first game, and I assume she'd play Curse, but she played Angron. And we decided to throw the big things, but keep the 4 drop, because this guy can get us a lot of value. And we opened 2 4 drops, and the big 9 drop. So... Here I'm like, if we can make it here, this will win me the game, as long as I can bait out Conqueror beforehand, right? That's that's the game plan. Is I need to be able to bait out Conqueror before I can land him. And we get Ecatress, that's great. So all we do is we heal up and pass turn, knowing we can play Ecatress next turn, and start healing all the time. We BM a little bit, because that's how we go. Unfortunately here, he lands Dewback, she lands Dewback. And we chop deck the Ashen Claw. So that's nice. So we swing into it and just play the Ashen Claw against it. Ekatrez, we can just play it next turn and then buff it, you know. So it starts to get a little bigger so it doesn't die straight off to um, Volcanic Instability. So she just swings here and plays the Void Engagement. This hurts. Getting kind of low already to three turns in, you know. And there's a um, Goldstone. Glad she played a Goldstone here. The earlier they get them out of their hands, the better it is for us. So we do as you expect. We land Ekatrez and we just buff here. From here on out, we can heal four a turn for two energy. So that's the game plan. Just try and heal out as much as possible. Plays the No Survivor to get a little lower. That's fine. I guess she's... Uh, at this stage, I assume she had another one in her hand or some other field wipe spell to be able to get rid of it next turn. But, you know, it is what it is. I just decide to play Ben Supplies here. Trying to cycle into a card. Get the other supplies. Play that. We draw into a free Ashen Claw. And I was just kind of, well, that was a bit of a waste. But we just heal and um, buff here. As I think that's the best move. And we can play things next turn. Could have probably board stated better there. But it is what it is. She plays uh, Armor of Mars here. And that's unfortunate. But we're not trying to rush her down. We're just trying to stabilize at this point. So we don't really care about her health so much. You know? And this time we decide to play Nev. Start getting that free damage in. We get a big old duty who's good against vehicles. Not so good in this matchup. But, you know, it's a 6 drop 6-7. Six, you know, it's a big body. And then we just buff heal. Got to keep doing that every turn so we don't lose. This is what I'm kind of keeping just for that little bit of extra damage at the end. Um, so she's updecked Armor of Mars again. So that was annoying. Gets it back up to full health. But it means she's not dealing any more damage to us. So it's kind of fine. You know. Maybe we can deal with it. So I chuck this guy down here. Basically just in case he plays very specific things. And it's also just something on the field. You know. It's an extra couple points of damage every now and again. Shooting for two with Nev. I decide if I want to put Ashen Claw here a little bit. But I decide to not. So ban supplies, checks down the fast, buffs it, this is fine, it gets him out of his hand, you know, there's two of his fast things, one of his buff cards, we're not too threatened at the moment, he's just going to swing at us for three, like, we're, we're in low life, but 
we're okay, you know? So we just chuck down the nine, knowing that it's damage, buff, heal, shoot for two at this stage. I think we also swing for one, yeah, because why not, right? Not like it matters. One damage is one damage. So here, I get very upsetty. Everybody saw that, right? The one card that actually matters, she got off the one in five chance with the mortar strike there, and I am very upset. Very upset. That was the reason why I was going all right in this matchup. At this point, you know, the deck is built to verse Kurs. And that was my saving grace that I got that out early. And now, um, yeah, a bit stuffed, unfortunately. That sucked. That sucked a lot. And there's a third fast thing. So she's only got one goldstone left and one buff spell. So now we just kind of have to stabilize. I was thinking of landing this guy here. But I dropped him to just try and bait the Conqueror. Like, I was just, I needed it to come out at this stage. So getting that damage in, I swing with the dude, just needing him to play the Conqueror out. That's all I'm, that's all I'm asking for. He plays Apotheosis. I'm like, okay. So, double Armor of Mars and Apotheosis so far this game. I'm like, cool. All the health heals. You know? And at this stage, we just swing in with a couple of things, shoot him out. Like, gotta just smack him down for health. Play a Joker Company. Play the Bounce Guy. Buff everything up knowing that he was very unlikely to kill us. Because he would need to have the fast thing and a buff spell. And something else. You know? But he plays Apotheosis again. So, double Apotheosis Angron. Which is very interesting. Back up to 5 attack now. So, at this stage now, we have to play Barbarous. You know, no matter what, we just got to play it. Like, if he's got the Conqueror, he's got the Conqueror, you know? And then we just swing at him with everything. And we get him pretty low. He's on 12, you know? Like, we can if he hasn't got Conqueror, we kill him next turn. But Melter Bomb! Why is he playing Melter Bomb? She playing Melter Bomb? Like, why, why is that a card? Like, excuse me? Why are you doing that? That's... What? I was so just caught off guard there. And then she got it off um, a band supplies, but that doesn't really end up mattering, I don't think. And then she's got the breach to shoot me, and then swings at me. I was... I was gobsmacked, you know? Like... Ah! So unfortunate. Had her the next turn as well, but... After healing, what... Uh, 10, 10, 7, and 7, so that's uh, 34 health this game, I was just like, no, you know, very, very unfortunate, so that was the first game, now the second game, knowing that um, he, she needs to play Curse, I decide that I'm going to I'm gonna stick with the same deck, I don't want the Curse mirror right now, I'd prefer to just play this, right, it's good for the mirror, and if we get Yara out after baiting a kill spell, we're feeling so good, so hard for them to deal with it, so we're going to jump into that match now, all right, so here we go, we're going second here, obviously. Oh, that's another thing. We also went second in the last match in the initiative uh, medium mirror. So, you know, that was unfortunate. We throw all of this because we don't think it's very good. Like, what does Ashen Claw hit early? What does this hit early? And this can kind of be okay. I was considering keeping the third covenant, but I decided to not. And we opened double abandon and the uh, sentence guy. So I, th I thought this was okay. Opens recon claw. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll just draw into a... Um, the five drop. Joker company soon, right? It'd be fine. We've got heaps of draw. We'll just get there. We got two of it in the deck. And we get the Apothecary. And I was just like, okay, cool. We're not too worried about early damage. So, so much, you know, we can just buff buff it out. Sorry, heal it out with their, our ability. So we haven't got anything really that bad, you know? So we decided to play the other abandoned supplies here. Just kind of stack up our hand a bit. And we get uh, this guy. And I decided to play this guy out this turn. And I was going to consider do this. But what I decide to do is wait till next turn so I can play Jubak, play this guy, and buff everything. So with his Recon Claw, he basically has to decide to deal with one of these two and not both. Um, so either I get another card or the two damage is going to go. So we drop the Jubak. We drop our defensive card. We buff up. And this is a good position for us at this stage. And we get an Apotheosis. So that's kind of nice for us. You know, late game heals. He drops his Joker Company, gives it Flank. Decides he wants to deal with this. Swings there. And that's fine. It happens. 
And of course that hits here, but that's okay. So I misplay a little here. Um, it's not too bad, so I give that sentence, and then I buff. And then I swing Jew back into it, because I'm dumb, because I thought the buff got it out of range, I'd leave it on one health, because he had four, and not five defense. But, I'll, you know, I could have swung it with the Apothecary, but I think leaving the Apothecary out is okay here. So they play the second Joker Company, I'm just hoping that it hits over here, you know, I'm really, really hoping. If it does, then I'm going to be, you know, very upset. But it does, so that's good for us, you know. Got a little lucky there. So what we do is we bounce this to hand. We play it out. Give the sentence one, deal the one damage, and then Ash and Claw. Get sort of field, we cycle a card, and we're not wasting resources. So at this stage, I'm like happy that I kept the Apothecary here and not um, the Jew back. You know, we got... Uh, the apotheosis for late game if things kind of get stalling out and he thinks he can rush us to win we can just play that he gets off the um forge complex here and that's very unfortunate for us but you know we just have to take it at this stage we're still digging for our joker companies he has she's had both and we haven't had either it's very annoying draw the other uh duty for sentence but we just decided to drop our nev get that effect off because we can always bounce it with this guy here Drop our other defensive card, buff up, and we swing for four. Get that damage in, you know? And then we just bounce him to hand so he can't deal with it, and we can kill something else very soon. You know, these two on our next turn is very good. Plays the thing, gives it flank, swings it here, swings his Warlord in. Alright, that's fine. Chucks down this guy. Very interesting, I thought. Not created by um, uh, Forge Complex, so, you know, very interesting. We decide to get this off field by shooting it there. Swing Nev into there, bounce Nev to hand. And play Nev out again, getting an electric trigger off it. And we get this guy, which is alright, you know, Sentence 1. And it's got Stealth, you know, it can be decent, this guy. I would never play it in a deck anymore, but, you know... As a free generated card, it could offer some nice utility. Man, my headset's saying battery low. This is lame. So he gives, plays the um, Mortar and gives it flank, swings into it, and takes it out with his Warlord. And he's hoping the three damage hits here, right? As you would. And he misses, which is nice for us. What do I do here? Uh, yeah, play the Veteran Knight, give it Sentence. Then do we shoot it for two or do we Ash and Claw? We shoot it for two. Yeah. Then we would bounce Nev to hand play it out again, no doubt. No, okay, we played the three guy. That's fine. I think we'll just run... Yeah, we'll fill our hand up too much. Decide to buff it. Yeah, okay. That's fine. There's the Helios Motor Carrier. The second one. Here's the um, dude who I don't really care about. It's a 2-4 that he could play, basically. You know, doesn't really matter. Um, his damage off this mortar does hit the Apothecary, which was very annoying, but it was going to happen eventually. So we just decide to get rid of that dude, get him off field, play out this other big dude. Now I'm baiting the kill spell here, that's the idea. The 7 drop, I'm like, well, your only real way to deal with this without me getting a relentless effect is for you to play the 7 drop. And he does. So I'm like, cool, all I need now is to draw Yara. So the biggest things in this matchup are Yara and the two Joker Company squads, and I haven't drawn any of that yet, which is very annoying. But... We're digging for it, and we have the Apotheosis, which is nice. That's a get out of jail at the end. So here, I'm like, well, I need to get rid of this now since I haven't drawn it. I really wanted this for the end game, killing him. But it is what it is. We decide to get rid of the Recon Claw with the Ashen Claw. And then just swing into the other guy, because we can at this stage, I think. We get the more order Squad there. That's kind of nice. And we just want to get this guy off field, you know. This is a card I really wanted to keep. With the Apothecary to bounce cycle it to keep everything out of um, range. Uh, sorry, out of stealth, but, you know, it is what it is. So we just had to play Tyro here. Um, I had big decisions to make, but, it is, you know, it's what I decided to do. And we just kill this off, leave this on field, and no one can take this out. But knowing that we can deal with it the following turns by either stunning it uh, and shooting it for two or whatever, or just killing it with Tyro... And he madnesses this turn, which is fine with us. You know, we're threatening with a buff of damage, but yeah. 
We land the um, Marauder Squad. That's fine. Oops, I paused this, didn't I? Uh, and then what do we do? We're just starting how we're going to deal with this because the buff went to Nev here. Uh, we buff up. I think we then swing Tyro into it, don't we? Do we just stun it and leave it? Is that what we do? Huh. We must just stun it and leave it. And say, we'll deal with our Tyro now. And, yeah, he jams it and Talent for Murders it. So, you know, and gets stealth off it, which is fine. I mean, like, that was good play of him getting this off Night Hunter. Of her getting the Night Hunter trigger for Sci -Fi, Sigma Phi 19. And then, you know, it was fine. We can deal with it. Not a drama. Run the Marauder Squad to see what we get. And we get the big card, you know? So we've got two 10 drops out of his deck, which is just fine with us, you know? We're both getting kind of low on cards at this stage. Then we just get rid of this. Um, I think we dropped the Drepica Company here. Yeah, we do. And we can just get a little bit of damage to his face. And I'm just saying here that if you decide to take this out without taking this out, you're going to take another three damage. That's what I'm doing with the Draker Company there. And I think that was the best play for me. He gets mostly in forgiveness now. She gets mostly in forgiveness. That's fine. And then plays the fast card so he, she can deal with my anti-stealth. And that's absolutely fine. Hits me for two. Hits the anti-stealth card for two. Smart move. Get a little bit of damage in. And is hidden. We get Manifest Destiny, and that's great for us. And we decide to just play it now. He's stalling out. Not, she's stalling out. Not much we can do. And play the um, uh, Sentence 2 guy. Now, at this stage, all we're doing is biding time until we can face bash him to death, right? So if you look at this field, right? 6 and 4 is 10. 5 is 15. 16, 17, 18, 19. Between, between these two, 21. So we've got 21 damage that's easy to do, right? So all we need to do is then get him to 21. So that's our plan at this stage. And we have heaps of life. We've got a lot better life than him. Because we have 29 and it's in Survivor 10 plus our Dreadnought if we need it. So we're both at the stage where we're fighting back and forth to see who can get that extra bit of damage in first. So here I give Sentence 2, play the third Covenant. Swing here. And then I'm deciding here whether I just want to shoot for 2 or play this 5 drop. And I just shoot it for two and buff. Got to keep my guy safe, you know, in case he plays a field wipe of some kind. And also the healing damage is nice. At this stage, he's got uh, nothing on field now, so we can, you know, get some damage in. Oh, wait, look at this 12-8 now that we have to deal with. Very annoying. But that's okay. We can deal with it. You know, we just give it sentence to shoot it for two, swing it for four, right? And it'll die. And now we can play Marauder Squad that gives us an extra two damage and buff it. So now our lethal range is uh, 23, I believe. So 6, 12, uh, 13, 14, 19, plus 4 is 23. So our lethal range now is 23 by dumping this. He just plays this to empty his hand because he's got too many cards in hand. And uh, drops this as well. Again, I mean, like, he can start dealing damage to our guys. So if he plays, like, a field wipe and then starts shooting everything, could be a problem. And it's an expensive card, isn't it? It's 7 drops. So I'm just like, well, let's just bounce it back to his hand. Make him waste 7 energy putting it out on the field again, right? I know that he can get stealth off this, but at this stage we're kind of okay with that. We're not too worried, I guess you could say. And then we get a little bit of damage in, right? And I could have swung here with this, but I decided to not because otherwise he was going to get stealth and then it was going to be too tricky. I was like, just let him get stealth off this. We can apotheosis on our turn to heal up a bunch so he can't just kill us out, right? And we'll be just fine. We've got heaps of damage on field now to deal with whatever he wants to throw down. And we'll be just fine. He chucks down another one of these. And that's very annoying for us. So we're unable to apotheosis this turn. We just give it sentence four. And play the third covenant. Swing into it. Get it off field. We land our Ekatrez. And just buff heal. And we're like, okay, well next turn we can absolutely kill him at this stage, right? We got a lot of damage on field. He can't, definitely can't kill us. There's no way. He plays another <laughs> Melgator that he got a uh, thing, and he plays his frontliner, and that puts a spanner on our work. I calculate here for a bit, and I can't get through this and kill him with what I've got on field. All right. So if we look at it, we'll draw this real quick. All right. We just decide to give it sentence two, and then what else do we do? I think we give it sentence four. Yeah. Then we swing with our. Ekatra's there knowing that we're kind of fine on life. Shoot it for some damage to get it off field with Nev. 
And what do we do here? I don't think we do anything. I think we just buff. Yeah, we don't want to play anything. We do not want him to get stealth. He's within our lethal range now, I'm pretty sure. So 10 and 11 is uh, 22, 23, 24 plus this. So he's within our lethal range now. Makes his can attack. Plays his Shrek, which is very annoying for us. But we're like, okay, we'll live. So here, I think Apotheosis is what saves us. Yeah, we just play Apotheosis here. And say, well, we got 10 extra life. You won't be able to get us. Because, you know, swing and swing gets us low, then one swing, and we assume he's got uh, Raven in hand at this point. All right? And then he just lands a few things, and now we've got lethal. Fortunately, he didn't have anything else there with front line. He couldn't get lethal on us because of the Apotheosis heal. And so... Finally, after all this back and forth of leaving these guys in stealth for so long without them doing anything, we finally get to the turn where we can kill them. And right out of that turn, we draw Yara, which would have helped us such a long time ago. But we just land uh, the Pa Gerbo, and we get another one. I'm like, okay, cool. And we just finish him off. Didn't necessarily need to land this, but I just wanted to show him what we had, you know. And we win that second match against Adriana. So that is... Amazing. Now we're one and one, and now we're onto the Curse Mirror. Let's just jump straight into that. Well, I'll show you the deck first. Let me show you my deck first. So, the deck I did for the Curse Mirror was this deck. Now, I think it's as good as it's going to get. You play your regular, you know, like Recon Claws, Asteroid Belts, Nostramo, A Roll of Fear, Talent for Murder, all the normal stuff. I threw in one Mr. Comic Reapers because it's hard to deal with. Um, I. Yeah, two Joker Company. And one Skatari Protector, I thought was pretty good. That's a pretty good combination against this deck. Um, we've got a Spectre of Judgment to deal with certain things in case he plays, she plays Yara or lands like something big like this and we just need to deal with it, you know. Or even Par Gerbo, you know, we play, she played that in the last one. So, a bit worried about that. And absolutely playing Yara. If we can just bait out their kill spells and land Yara, we win the game from there, you know. Such a, such a strong play. And one Apotheosis because I don't think two's good. It just clugs your hand if you get them too early, and especially in World Cup where you don't want to do that. Right? Um, and Forge Complex, obviously, is amazing in the matchup. So we're going to jump into it now. So remember, we went um, second in the Initiative Medium Mirror, and we went second here as well, unfortunately. But we did open Mercy and Forgiveness. So I was like, well, that's awesome. You know, I'd prefer to go second and open Mercy and Forgiveness than go first and not. I think that's better because you can just get so much more damage on. Um, so we just, yeah, do the usual first plays of uh, saying nope and swinging for, sorry, minus thing, attack for one, swinging. You know, we've opened pretty well, actually. Joker Company, Reaper, Spectre, and Mercy and Forgiveness. And we get a punitive action, which is pretty good for us, I think. We play the Mercy here and decide to not swing. It's like, there's no point. And we're just waiting for, we got no Recon Claw, but neither does he, you know. So we're like, okay, it's fine. You know, if you want to play Recon Claw, I can kill it. You can probably kill mine as well. We get Yara as well, so we're feeling quite good here. We've got a decent hand. And we get four damage in here. Alright, and that feels good. Supply lines, interesting cards to be playing in this deck, but, you know, get those vehicles out early. Like, um, either the Vakaran or the um, Mortar Carriers, you know. And we get back to the same life. And that's just fine. I think we play Curse of Foresight here. Yeah, we do. Drop those cards. Fill up our hand a little. And we draw the Recon Claw. So that's kind of nice for us. And I'm just like, well, I may as well land it and try and bait out something here, you know? I've got the Reaper in hand as well. And they play their Anti-Stealth card, the Road Tower, and the Mortar Carrier that they got off um, the thing. And unfortunately, it hits our Recon Claw. I'm like, damn it. That sucks a lot. So, good thing we top deck Megalator, and we just bounce it to hand. Very good for us. And we've got nothing else to do here, so we just reduce these attack to zero and swing for four damage and say, play out that Mortar Carry again. Use all your energy for it, please. Because we just needed that turn. So she does. Swings at the Megalator. Random damage hits me. I think I play Spectre of Judgment here. Can't remember. No, we, yeah, that's right. We Talent for Murder it. Yeah, and swing at it with our Melgator. Get it off field. And I think we just end turn that. No, we get him, reduce his second swing twice. Get a little bit of advantage in. 
I go to her. She reduces my attack a couple of times. Fair game. And plays the thing. Doesn't get fast, but that's fine. It's on field. And so here, I kind of misplay. Why do I play this? Like, what's the point of playing this right here? Like, just, it can get rid of the stealth and then you swing at it and kill it. Like, I'm, I'm dumb. Like, I don't know why I've done that. I should have just played the Joker Company. I had both in hand. Like, that was a big, big misplay. Shrek is such a strong card, especially in the mirror if they can't deal with it. And I just throw it out as a sacrifice. <laughs> and big misplay. Really big misplay. So, as you do, she removes the stealth off it. Reduces its attack. And I'm like, okay, well, now she just swing into it, right? Nah, she plays Rule of Fear. I'm like, okay. I mean, like, it's a good play, right? And then she gets a bunch of damage on us. Now, here I'm scared. All right? We're down low. If we swing into this, we're going to put ourselves in Raven range. So, I'm like, uh, cry. What am I doing? I get so panic here. So, we decide to say, well, that can't attack this turn. We're no longer in Raven range. This just gets us down to nine. So she apotheosis. Apotheosis. Yeah. And that's fine. You know, like just heal up. We can live with that. But we're still pretty scared here, right? Because if we just madness here, they can make us lose stealth. So I play Joker Company to get rid of it, right? And then here's my second misplay. I play Skitaro Protector straight after, like an idiot. And now it hasn't got stealth because I'm dumb. Right? So that's a massive misplay again. That's my second misplay. I'm just crying here. You know, she swings into it with the uh, thing we didn't kill that we we're supposed to. Plays madness, heals up to thirty, swings here, kills it, which is fine. Gets stealth, and that's okay with us because you're just gonna take three damage here. At this stage, though, we're like, well, we kind of have to play our own, don't we? So we don't die to anything like Raven. You know, she was one damage away from killing me during some of those turns, which we knew about. We're playing as if she had Raven in hand, but we just misplayed a few times. You know, unfortunately, talent for murder here. You know, she hasn't got uh, mercy and forgiveness off, so swings at it with after talenting for murder. Kills it, gets stealth. That's fine. What do I do here? Oh, sorry, I, I top deck my back around. I'm like, cool, that's a pretty good cut to play because it goes well with my recon claw. So I track down the recon claw, track down the big ass vehicle thing, and say, what have you got to deal with it? Design flaw. And look, good card in the mirror, I think. There's a lot of vehicles that you just want to change to one health so you can kill. I thought, interesting and good. It's cheaper than um, the other card. Um, yeah. And so we play Apotheosis here. We need that heal, right? And we put us up to above health. Right? We've got more health than her now. And we've got Mercy and Forgiveness off. There's a Recon Claw. There's a Reaper. Feeling a bit bad. She gets that three damage in. And we're like, hmm, what do we do here, right? So I play this guy here. And this is not the optimal play, but, you know, it was still okay. We get four damage in on everything. We give this thing flank and swing. And we're like, well, you're just going to kill this on your turn now, and it'll be happy days, and you'll get stealth. So that's fine. Here's Shrek. Now, Shrek's now a 6-5, and I'm a little bit worried. If she can just get that a little bit bigger, we're going to be in big, big trouble. So we play the Joker Company, and we're going to just see how this goes, as well as we play Forge Complex. And say, well, let's just get, start getting some cards. Hopefully we get some answers. And... Good for us. I think it was good that it hit there. And she plays Pargobo. And I'm like, okay, cool. You got stealth now. Swing for 10 damage here. Why wouldn't you not? Right? And she just didn't swing for the 10 damage. And when she didn't, I was like, oh. Okay. Yay. I would have absolutely swung for the 10 damage. It is such a greedy play to not at this stage, right? 10 damage is huge at this stage in the game. It puts you in the lead. We're down to 18. It's closer to Raven range. We're feeling bad. But no, she decides to just leave it and she gets greedy with it. And we punish her for it. This is just a shout out to everybody. Don't get greedy. If your Shrek is at 10 attack, swing with it. Like, it's 10 damage. So yeah, she plays Rather Reaper, gives us Khan attack, which is fine. Plays the Jew back. We're like, okay, well that sucks, but we'll live. You know, she gets a three damage in. We're not going to hurt her this turn. It's a lot of damage there. We've got to deal with it. Uh, we get... Uh, we get this guy. He's not very good here right now, though. So we just play Curse's Chosen. Right? Reduce it to zero. Give it flank swing here. 
get that off field. That's both their Reapers off field, and we've still got one in hand to say can't attack for a turn. We play our Asteroid Belt just to cycle a card, and we pick up the Raven, so that's nice for us. You know, she's not in Raven range yet, but, you know, enough due back. She got a um, Energy Edition card, and has got Spectre of Judgment here. So it gets that off field, and we're fine with that. Now we've baited that out, we can potentially just land uh, Sedusa when we want to, but I kind of decide there's a better way of doing this, right? And you're going to see that. Like, playing Sedusa here is a great, great idea. She also sacrifices this, so we can't get stealth off it. But I'm like, well, we don't really care about Sedusa at this point, so let's just give you Khan Attack, because that does the same thing, but with less commitment. And dump Reaper as well. There's a lot of damage on field at this stage. Between all of this, all right, now she's down to 15, but this is lethal. You know, 6, 4, and, and 4 is 10, plus 5 is 15. That's lethal unless you play a frontliner. So she does chuck down the frontliner here. And the Recon Claw. Now we're going to play the game of Spot Lethal. Right? That's, that's what we're playing here. How do we kill this and get lethal? And we know that we've got lethal on field. And I triple checked my math here. I was like, well... This has flanks. So that's three damage in. How do we get another six damage in on this? Right? For six energy or less. I'm like, well, look at that. Look at that. So what we do here is we got quite lucky with our trigger there, getting the Voltrax. But even if that didn't happen, we're still in a good position, you know? We could have dealt with this and kind of been okay for the next turn as well. But we just, yeah, get that off field. And I triple checked my math here. I was like, yes, six and four is 10. It is 10. And five is 15. You know? And then we get the win. So, long last games. Very, very long games there. And we lost that first one to very unlucky. We went second in both initiative mirrors. But man, did we get there in the end. Finally, I didn't let down my team. And we won a round for the World Cup for me. Yay! So... At this stage um, of the games of the World Cup, we have both uh, the first two rounds we've 2 1 because I lost mine. In this one, uh, so far with 2 0, the third guy, Fulgrim, hasn't played his games. He's versing LCFR, which is why it was very big for me to win this because he's <laughs> worried about that game because LCFR is a very good player. Uh, so he was a bit worried that he would lose that. So it's all the pressures off him now. It's good. It's better to win 3 0 than to win 2 1, but, you know. A win's a win at the end of the day. So thank you guys very much for watching. Subscribe down below to keep up to date. I'll keep posting more uh, King of the Hill as it comes and more of these as the World Cup continues. I'll try and get my um, uh, my teammates matches as well to put up because I think that'd be cool to see their matches. I might get Fulgrims because he's versing LCFR and that's a pretty cool matchup. Um, join my Subjugated Gaming Discord down below to keep up to date. Join the Horus Heresy Legions Discord as well. Follow me on Twitter because I post there every time I upload a video. Other than all of that, have a good afternoon.